this week on the show, we have Law of Assumption expert, Joshua Tongle. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that negative thoughts are simply a glitch in the system and does not determine your infinite potential. Simply recognize negative thoughts and make the decision to hit the delete button and reboot. We've all had a virus on our computer or experienced our phones glitching. So what do we do in these situations? Do we discard a perfectly good phone or do we simply fix it, reboot it, and get it running smoothly again? Begin to start thinking of negative thoughts or fear as a glitch in the system. So often, people fear that their thoughts define who they are, when in reality, we always have the power to take back our control and rewire our mind for success. Remember, you are an infinite being with limitless potential, so never let a negative thought define who you are or determine what you're capable of. As Jeremy Hammond quotes, your mind is programmable. If you're not programming your mind, someone else will program it for you. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. So I yeah, want to talk yep. a little bit about the law of assumption. Can you explain to us what okay. that is? Yeah, so the law of assumption, just to keep it really simple, is that he he basically is basically just the idea that, are, that there are infinite states in this world, right? So states, states of consciousness, let's say. So like there's a state of health, wealth, happiness, sadness, you know, every, anything you can think of as a state. And basically what law of assumption teaches is that all you have to do is assume that state of consciousness and that's what's going to manifest in your world. And so, you know, if you want to get more money into your life, you assume the state of wealth. If you want to heal your body, you assume the state of health and so on. And so it's it's similar to the law of attraction in the sense of the mechanics of it, mm -hmm. right? Well, depending who you talk to, because I've heard some people <laughs> define law of attraction differently, but if you're aiming for the feeling pretty much. And so that's kind of like his classic line in, from his book, feeling is the secret. So what you manifest in this world is based upon how you feel. Wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. Next on the show, we have law of attraction and law of assumption expert, Joshua Tongol. Studying the principles of the author, Neville Goddard, Joshua will be sharing Neville's teachings and how to apply these concepts in your life to speed up your manifestations. Joshua, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am doing amazing. I was telling you before, I'm a big fan of your work and I want to talk to you all about it. Let's talk about, you know, I know that you study the teachings of Neville Goddard. So for yeah. our audience that isn't familiar with him, tell us about him and what he teaches. Yeah, so Neville Goddard was, to me, um, like one of the greatest mystical thinkers and teachers of the past century. So, you know, he was born in 1905 and he was introducing something called the Law of Assumption to, you know, an, an audience that, that was pretty much religious, you know. I mean, he spoke to a lot of people, but he, he, he spoke in a lot of churches and um, he was teaching on the Law of Assumption and how imagining creates reality. And uh, he just had a lot of, I, I do believe he was a teacher who was far ahead, of, way ahead of his time. So I don't know how, what else you'd want me to say about that. But yeah, an amazing teacher. Yeah, absolutely. And how did you get introduced to his work? Uh, probably around, you know, I'd say more or less like 10 years ago, I would just see his name pop up here and there because I've been studying Law of Attraction. And then, like I said, I, his name would pop up. And then I finally got into his work when I was working on my second book, which had to do with law of attraction and manifestation. And then I read his book, Feeling is a Secret. But it wasn't until several years ago, to be honest, when I like got really, really deep into it, when I decided to do like a whole series on YouTube. And so, you know, I was like getting into his work pretty much every day, <laughs> like reading yeah. everything that I could get my hands on. So, yeah, his, his work has definitely changed my life. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he was born in the 1900s and he his yeah. his theories were pretty unconventional for that era. So I yeah, want to talk definitely. a little bit about the law of assumption. Can you explain to us what okay. that is? Yeah. So the law of assumption, just to keep it really simple, is that he, he basically is basically just the idea that, are, that there are infinite states in this world. Right. So states states of consciousness, let's say. So like there's a state of health, wealth, happiness, sadness, you know, every, anything you can think of as a state. And basically what law of assumption teaches is that all you have to do 
is assume that state of consciousness and that's what's going to manifest in your world. And so, you know, if you want to get more money into your life, you assume the state of wealth. If you want to heal your body, you assume the state of health and so on. And so it's, it's similar to the law of attraction in the sense of the mechanics of it, mm -hmm. right? Well, depending who you talk to, because I've heard some people <laughs> define law of attraction differently, but if you're aiming for the feeling pretty much. And so that's kind of like his classic line in, from his book, feeling is the secret. So what you manifest in this world is based upon how you feel, right? But just to clarify to your audience, it, it, it's not about like the emotion though. I think that's where people kind of trip up because they think, especially that I've heard on YouTube and some material, they would talk about uh, feeling being equated with emotion. So they're kind of like trying to have this high vibe all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to be like super happy all the time. And I'm thinking, you know, there's nothing wrong with being happy. But, um, you know, try telling that to someone that's like at a funeral or someone that has something devastating happen to them or something yeah. like that, you know, just kind of real life experiences. So when Neville's talking about feeling is a secret, he's talking about the acceptance of the fact that your desire is already yours, that it's already done. So whatever that, whatever it is that you want in this world, Daryl, um, it already exists. All you have to do is assume it. Well, how do you assume it? By feeling it, by mm -hmm. feeling the reality of it. And then somehow, some way, it's gonna manifest in your world. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is that a lot of these law of attraction experts, they talk about the quantum field and that, mm -hmm. you know, everything that you want already exists, as you mentioned, and there's yeah. different versions of you in this quantum field that have what you want. So can you mm -hmm. tap into that a little bit and tell us more, explain that to our audience? Yeah, so I'll, I'll use the, the language of Neville. So, you know, if we talk about the quantum field, everything exists, there's infinite realities. I've heard that before. Um, Neville would just talk about how all states exist at the same time, right? So everything that you want and everything that you need already exists. So if you were to think about states of consciousness as like, think of everything as like a mansion, right? With has many rooms and each room represents a state of consciousness. Um, there's a room, like I said, can be a room or a state of consciousness of health. Another one be a wealth, another one be a love. In order to activate that state of consciousness, is that you have to feel it. You have to match it with your with beliefs. And once you match it with the belief, um, then it becomes a reality in your world, right? It'll, it'll project all its plots, plans, and dramas, as Nemo says. So yeah, everything exists right now. You're not creating something out of thin air, like that mosquito right in front of me. <laughs> um, yeah, you're not creating something out of thin air. Um, you're basically assuming that state of consciousness that exists already and you're giving it life and therefore it manifests physically in your 3D world. Very interesting. And, and you know, one thing that I noticed with the law of attraction or trying to manifest anything, I feel that a lot of people have resistance, right? They want it now, they want it badly, they want to manifest the money, they want the career. And when they don't see it in their 3D reality, they get upset and they think it doesn't work. So I feel like resistance yeah. obviously is the biggest thing, right? For all of us, because we're humans and we, we, you know, we want yeah. instant gratification. So how sure, can we combat sure. this resistance and really get into a state of of ease and acceptance that our wish is already fulfilled? Yeah, yeah. so I, I would say I would encourage the person that's learning these, you know, this, uh, trying to understand manifestation is to really understand how manifestation works. When you understand the law, right, um, you'll learn to be patient because it's a law, right? I mean, you can't violate that law, that's it. And so um, when people are talking about how like, okay, I'm looking, is, is, is my manifestation still on its way? And they're looking for signs, you know? Neville talks about assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Fulfilled, meaning that it's already done, right? You're already feeling the reality of that. He talks about something called living in the end. You go straight to the end. You want something, you go straight to the end. You don't think about the process. You don't think about the how. When there's somebody thinking about, oh, you know, is it, is it still on its way? Is it coming? Now let me look for a sign. Um, you know, or they're placing a lot of importance on it. That already implies that they're not living in the end. That already reveals that they're not assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Because think about this, Dario. If you're living in the end, right, where you're feeling that it's already done, you're feeling that it's already finished, can you be at the end? Can you be at the destination and still be driving along the road looking at the road signs to see if it's still on the way? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So in other words, you go straight to the end. If you're still kind of like, oh, no, maybe this stuff doesn't even work, you know, because I'm not saying anything. that just already shows that they're not assuming the feeling. They're out of this state of consciousness. And so what I would tell people to do is that if it's a law and it works every single time, it can't fail, 
just get back into that state, right? But don't just enter that state. You have to remain in that state of consciousness and persist in it, and it's gonna happen. And、mm-hmm. so it's just a matter of when, you know. So now we'll just always encourage people: don't think about the how. Just go straight to the solution.、Mm-hmm. You know, if you're thinking about money, you don't think. Typically, a lot of people are like, okay, who do I borrow money from? <laughs> you know, who who has to die so I can inherit some money or something like that?、Yeah. You know, that was just go straight to the end, and and the means will take care of itself because of the bridge of incident, right? Which is the process, and somehow, some way, which is why you, you, there's all these quote unquote miraculous stories of just weird ways people get healed or you know manifest money. It'll happen, and so it's all about shifting your attention away from the problem because. If, if people are so concerned about where is it, they're focusing on what they're seeing with their, you know, when their eyes are open. What they need to do is that they need to go within and tap into that reality because imagining creates reality. If they could see it, they could feel it. It's already done. Then you, do you know? I, I felt it. I felt that reality. I felt that wealth. I felt the healing of my body, etc. And you trust in that because you don't manifest what you want. Right. No matter how badly you want it, there's、yeah. always this desperation. I want this badly because rents due. You know, in a couple、yeah. days, right? It's not about wanting something.、Um, it's about surrendering to your wish fulfilled. You let go by detaching from your negative states, by detaching from, you know, your old negative moods, your old reactions to life, and then you go within, and then you go to the end of your solution, and then you feel it. And when you feel it, you're there. You said, I felt it. Right, and that's a state of consciousness. So you do that, it'll take care of itself. It'll unfold, right?、Mm-hmm. And so Neville talks about like the acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. So you don't even have to worry about how you're gonna get there. Yeah, you know. So reduce the importance and don't even trip. It's gonna happen. It's a law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel like you know there are little brain hacks that you can do to kind of keep yourself focused on. On believing that your wish is fulfilled. So for me, it's affirmations. I always say that the、yeah. universe is giving me evidence every day、cool. of how lucky I am. So I'm looking for that. What are some affirmations or little brain hacks that you use personally to keep you focused and on track? Because I feel like once you figure that out, you can tap into that 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 state at any time. Yeah. Well, I think you know, as I was mentioning earlier, a lot of people know how to enter the state of consciousness, and the way they enter it is by feeling it, right? But this is the part where people make the mistake. They say, "Josh, I felt it, but then you know,、uh, where is it, right? I, I I meditated for 30 minutes. I said an affirmation for an hour today. Yeah, but I'll ask him, what the heck did you do for the, you know, the rest of the 15 hours or 20 hours that you're awake, right? So you can meditate for 30 minutes and you can close your eyes and be all spiritual." But then the rest of the day, there's these inner conversations that are going on in your mind, like I'm poor, or where is money going to come from, or am I going to stay sick forever, or <clears throat> is life always going to be this way? And so my my suggestion to people is that if you you can enter the state by feeling it, but in order to remain in the state, you got to be aware of your inner conversation. What are you saying most of the time? Right, so and that's a part that people are not really aware of. Like I said, they're just like focusing on, well, I did my affirmation of the day, or you know, my meditation. But it's what you're saying most of the time that's going to determine the state that you're in. Because Neville talks about your dwelling place,、mm-hmm. right? So the dwelling place is a, the state of consciousness that you're most comfortable with. You know, so people who are trying to manifest money. And let's just say they're they've been in a state of poverty for like a long time. The the state of wealth could be a little bit new for them, so it might feel like a little bit weird and uncomfortable. But it's like Neville kind of likens it to a suit of clothes. When you wear something in the beginning that's new, you're very conscious of it in the beginning. Like is someone staring? <laughs> Can、yeah. they see my new bag or my new clothes <laughs> or whatever? Yeah. And they're so conscious of it, but then you wear it to the point where you don't even think about it anymore. And that's the part of persistence that Neville talks about—that you want to wear the state of consciousness, so to speak, where you want to break it in,、mm-hmm. where it's just so natural to you.、Yeah. So you do that by paying attention to what's what's going on inside. What's my inner conversation like? Because believe it or not, your inner conversations are what's determining your world. You、yeah. know. So when someone says, "Well, I wouldn't want to manifest that. Why would I manifest a bad marriage? Why would I manifest, you know, this struggle?" Yeah, you wouldn't do it like consciously. <laughs> yeah.、But、at a subconscious level, there's a lot of programming we have, unfortunately, through education, through family, through our upbringing, and so on. And so, be aware of those inner conversations when you recognize that you're in a state that you don't like, right? Where you're kind of hard on yourself, or you're feeling whatever, poor or negative. Just show yourself some grace. You flip it. You reframe it, 
and you get back into the state and you get back into the feeling and then you trust in that, right? That the seeds that you're planting all throughout the day, it's planted, you're gonna reap it, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to keep digging it up, Neville says, and trying to say, is it growing, is it growing? No, you let it go, you let yeah. it germinate, right? He calls it the gestation period. And then you let it happen, right? No need to force anything, no mm -hmm. need to hustle because everything on the outside is just basically your consciousness objectified or Neville calls it, your, uh, your physical world is just frozen speech, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. It's just control, you know, control your inner conversations, be more aware of it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think a lot with the law of attraction, law of assumption, all of these things, the things, the things that people don't actually realize is that it's all internal work, right? Everything yeah. happens mm -hmm. inside. It's the way we think is what we see. It's like a reflection. The outside is just a reflection of what we're seeing in our minds, right? On our exactly. beliefs. Uh -huh. And I think when we do the inner work, every day and we work on personal development, that's when our manifestations really happen because we ha we're in a state of knowing and being confident in ourselves. So I think that's a lot. That's why a lot of people trip up on manifesting, right? Is that yep. they're not doing the inner work. I want to talk about your YouTube channel. You talk a lot about okay. manifesting money overnight. Um, and I know that, <laughs> you know, you were also uh, in a, uh, one stage of your life that you were in debt. I know you talked about being in oh, debt yeah. and how you manifested yeah. paying off the debt and you know now living in a state of abundance so tell us about that and how we can manifest more money into our lives yeah i mean so i don't know if you want me to approach this from a neville lava assumption perspective or from let's how i josh actually kind of and did. neville <laughs> <Both>. <laughs> let's okay, do both <laughs> so when it came to like my debt if i look back at that experience so uh that had to do believe it or not because i placed a lot of importance on the debt right yeah. so i made a big deal about it i remember like I, I had that debt for several years. I'm like, man, 25 K is like, I can't, I have other debt that I have to pay for like school, you know, which was like almost a hundred K. But this was just like credit card debt that was already kind of stressing me out at that time. And I was like, no matter what I do, I couldn't bring it down. You know, it would go down a little bit, <laughs> then it goes back up. Then it goes yeah. down, then it goes out. Like, what the heck, dude? You know, and I realized like I was working so hard at that time because I had my own business at that time. Like I started up like LLC that had nothing to do with my teachings online. Right. But it was a way that I had income, you know, to support my wife and I at that time. And I remember just making such a big deal about it that when I learned this whole idea of manifestation, that the way to do it is to bring balance, is to reduce the importance of something. So I remember telling myself, it's not a big deal. Now, to a lot of people to say, what the heck are you talking about, man? That's like 25 K plus, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like that is a big deal. But then if everything's energy, it's like putting a lot of energy in one place. It gets built up. And so there's a lack of balance. There's an imbalance there. And basically what the, if you want to call it the universe, what happens is that because of the law of balance, when you put too much energy in one place, you're going to get the exact opposite to create a sense of equilibrium, to create a state of balance. And so every time I'm like, I really don't want this debt. I really don't want this debt. I played so much, played so much importance on it. I got more debt. Yeah. <laughs> but in the morning, I, I, I just dropped it. And I told my wife, I remember this is a trip. I was like, you know, I'm just going to shut down the business, the business that I thought that I'm going to try to, you know, make some money to pay off the debt. I said, I'm going to shut down the business and I'm going to follow my heart and I'm going to get into spiritual teachings, you know, because I believe that this manifestation stuff worked. So I reduced the importance of it. And in just a couple of months, I paid it off just like that. Like it was easy. And I remember looking at my bank account. I still have, a, you know, I'm in the Philippines, but I have a bank account in the States. But I remember seeing my my uh, bank statement and it just said like zero, zero you know, zero, zero, zero. It's like, okay, I don't know anything. And I remember looking at that balance and I didn't feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get emotional. I just felt so like, okay, I screenshotted it. I showed my wife, I said, look, Rems, it's, it's, you don't know anything. It's paid off. Cause I realized that several months ago prior, I didn't make, I, I reduced the importance of it. I didn't make a big deal. So when I saw it as zero, zero, Oh yeah, no big deal. But I I thought about it. If I did make a big deal about it and stress about it, and then I finally said that zero zero, I'd probably be like, oh god, thank yeah. you so much, so, right? Because there's a lot of that energy. So I, I learned that it's all about intention. That debt's already paid for, and all I had to do was just put one foot in front of the other, follow my dream, everything will take care of itself. And it did. It just a few months. Imagine yeah. like four four years, I couldn't pay it off, and in just a few months, I paid it off. Yeah, I think that's so true. Is when you put your focus on these problems <laughs> or debt exactly. problems, whatever, it, it, it does whatever. grow, right? <laughs> it makes exactly. it so much worse than yeah. <laughs> it is, opposed to just kind of being in a state of, of 
of ease and just kind of just as you said yeah. putting one foot in front of the other and believing it's going to work out because <laughs> the yeah. energy is the same right to believe or to right. disbelieve so it's it's the same so yeah. you might as well believe yeah. right yeah, yeah. Absolutely. might as well believe yeah what if neville goddard's most famous quotes is that you know everyone is you pushed out i think that's such an interesting mm -hmm. concept so can you explain that to us yeah, that, that's a very interesting and controversial statement from Neville. But basically, uh, it basically just means that everyone is you pushed out. But without getting too controversial about it, um, he does teach that we're all one. We're all God, right? Um, he's not saying that you don't have any individuality because even though we're all one, um, we still have our individuality, um, even in the next life. But basically, not just people, but everything is our consciousness objectified. He says, everything even in, in its detail is our consciousness objectified. So just because, um, you know, you see someone down the street, you know, doing some sort of crazy act, like something evil <laughs> that you would consider bad, we're not saying, hey, you know, you're the one committing that. No, no, we're just saying that your consciousness, um, you, you could be reflecting something inside yourself, like fear or something, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, the, you get robbed or whatever, you know, so he's not saying like, hey, you're the one <laughs> yeah. doing that, you know, like individually, but in a sense, you're connected because the fear kind of quote unquote attracted that, you know, but not saying that you chose to like, okay, you're a bad guy, you know, but ultimately everything, every situation is your consciousness objectified pretty much, you know, so I'm trying to keep it as like, not as <laughs> controversial as possible or complicated, but yeah, every everything that you're thinking, everything that you're aware of, not necessarily what you want, but what you're aware of, you're experiencing it in your life right now, right? Um, and it's hard for people to swallow because then we would think of all the, the things that we don't like in our lives and say, oh, I wouldn't have attracted that. Well, you probably wouldn't have wanted to attract that. But when you focus on fear, like I'll give an example, um, just a couple of years ago, right? We were in a lockdown and everything. If you're in a con constantly in a uh, fear, 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 you're going to attract things that are just going to support that. Um, state of consciousness you're gonna have sickness you're gonna have people around you be sick because you're just aware of it so much you know but then I remember telling my wife during the lockdown oh, I ain't gonna get sick we're not gonna be affected financially and then we weren't yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. actually that was actually our best year back in 2020 financially and we didn't get sick nothing you know um, and I didn't follow the rules either that's a whole other issue <laughs> you know and everyone's telling me to like do put on masks or whatever but um, but yeah it's like I, I did, wasn't affected by the collective consciousness that was going on of, you know, stay away, stay away and this and that. But and I, I don't want to yeah. go too much on a tangent. But. Yeah. yeah. And, and just to break that down a little bit is that so if everyone is you pushed out, they're an aspect of yourself. So it's something in your personality or who you are that is being represented to you. Is that how kind of how it works? Yeah. I mean, in, in one sense, well, in, in, in a weird way, it's like ultimately everyone, you have all the states of consciousness inside you anyway. Yeah. Right. So, so um, people don't want to hear this, but the occupant of every state is God. And mm. we're not just talking about the good states either. Right. So if we're just speaking strictly Neville, Neville would say even the thief, that's God. Right. Mm. Um, God is the occupant of every state, but the individual, we, we make choices, you know, and uh, it could be a quote unquote good or, good or bad choice, depending on how we perceive of what's good and bad. Right. Um, depending on, like, I guess what you believe, what's good or you know, right and wrong. But yeah, um, you could attract things. It's like someone who's in an abusive relationship. It's not like, let's just say, let's just assume the girl's an innocent one. We're not saying, see, that girl's bad, you know, uh, so she, she must be thinking of abuse, abuse, abuse. No, she might be thinking fear, 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 you mm -hmm. know, and I don't want my, 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 my partner to hurt me. And then the partner hurts her. So it's a, just a reflection of the fear that she's projecting from the inside. You know, we're not saying that, oh, she wants to be abused. Yeah. You know, it's just mm -hmm. more so, um, you know, that state of consciousness that's bringing those experiences into her lives. But she has a choice to say, I'm going to leave that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, there's a there's a choice. And but there there are people in our lives that come for a reason. But I don't want to necessarily say just it's like God, you know, bring these people into your lives. I mean, no, it's your it's really your consciousness. Um, you know, and you could have quote unquote good or bad people come into your life and yeah, um, yeah. It's actually interesting because if you look at it like that, that means that everything that happens to you is really serving in your evolution. 
<laughs> which is actually really interesting. Yeah. It's all it's all meant it and put in your path to help you evolve into the best version of yourself, right? It's, it's all the challenges, yeah. Yeah. everything, so that you could kind of go exactly. within and change. Exactly. So it actually it gives you a lot of power yeah. when you think of it like that, if you think about it correctly. Yeah, we call it the educated school of darkness. So we're here to learn and we're here to grow. You know, so Neville talked about the time when he was in school and the teacher called him up to the front in, a, in front of a bunch of students and she made fun of his voice. And she said, you know, he'll never make a living using his voice. And then <laughs> look what Neville ended up doing. Yeah. But Neville talked about how at that time that he was made fun of, uh, he said, maybe I needed that jolt in my life, you know. But he says that to every problem, there's a solution. But he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Mm. But I like on how he makes a condition because there's a lot of bad things that happen in people's lives that there's no good ending when you really think about some of them, right? Mm -hmm. He says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it to good if you live in the end right if you persist so there's that condition that for people to you know not you know to actually do something about it right because mm -hmm. like if you had struggles in your life if i had struggles in my life i have a choice to just accept it and let it defeat me and then you know i pass away <laughs> didn't yeah. do anything yeah but you have these jolts in your life and whatever it may be and then all of a sudden it makes you a stronger person because you choose to overcome and think of the solution to that problem you yeah, know? absolutely. I mean, I interview a lot of successful people, celebrities, and all of them went through so many challenges oh, and, yeah. and obstacles before they became successful, whether they were homeless exactly. or broke or they yeah. had really bad childhoods. They all went through all of this and now they are where they are. And it's really amazing to hear how many challenges that they had to right, go through. Right. And at that point, they could have said, you know what? My life is hard. I want to give up. But most of the most yeah. successful people in the world, they, they said, no, you know what? I'm going to keep going. And and that's how they became successful. So sometimes the, the bad things that happen are just, they're, they're just stepping stones to greatness, right? Exactly. Just to test you. Exactly. I, I know, Josh, exactly. you're also a psychic medium. I, I read that in your profile. So what are some things you've been able to predict and how did you discover that gift? Yeah, so uh, for myself, I, ever since I was like a little kid, um, Dario, I, I always had like weird experiences, <laughs> like um, or I was very sensitive to things. So <clears throat> when I was a child, I would like see stuff. I would see like if you would call them ghosts, you know, wow. but, like my eyes open and things like that. And I would be screaming and <laughs> crying to my mom and dad when I was a kid yeah. and I was fully awake, you know, and I and I even into my adulthood, even to now, you know, I would see stuff. Um, that's just some some of the stuff I don't know how to explain it. To be honest, I don't know how to interpret some of my experiences, but they're with my eyes open because I'm a very skeptical person yeah. in some ways, too, which is interesting. But because um, I could say something like, you know, I'm seeing something in my mind. It's supposed to say, well, you're just imagining that in your head. But, yeah, I have stuff where I see stuff with my eyes open and then I see like a, yeah. a figure just standing there in like a hospital room, you know. Wow. So my whole life, I've, I've kind of had those happen on occasion. It's not like an everyday thing. Um, but I guess when it comes to psychic, I would kind of make use it in a different way instead of the way it's commonly defined or understood it to be as like predicting the future um the, the reason why i wouldn't get too caught up with using the word psyche when it comes to predicting is because if all realities exist i don't think that everything is predetermined or like fatalistic right i believe yeah. that you can still choose so when i talk about predicting the future oh yeah i could predict the future by creating the future by imagining my future right so in that yeah. sense <laughs> i'm predicting yeah. my future but when I use the word psychic or medium, I'm referring to more so like just picking up things about people, mm. you know. So I, I reached a point where um, I believed in this stuff when I was a kid because I grew up in a what's called like a charismatic church, like a Christian church that had like prophets and healers and things like that from like Africa and Korea. And they would come to the mega churches and I would hear them speak. They would prophesy and I was like, oh, yeah, OK, that's very interesting. And I went through like a very... Um, skeptical period at that time for eight years where I just thought it was all a bunch of BS, you know, yeah. like they're a bunch of charlatans and some of them actually are charlatans, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but then I started having experiences because I had like, um, I was diagnosed with a condition and I also had a back injury at that time that I was suffering from excruciating pain. And it, long story short, I healed myself from those, um, chronic conditions and I opened myself up back to that world of the paranormal. And from that point, I started getting those weird experiences again where I started oh. to feel people's pains. Like I would just like 
walk into a room or people would walk into my room and right when I come into contact, I feel their pain on my body or condition or sensation. And that was very new to me. I never learned that like in the Christian church when I was young. So this was already in my 20s. I was like, oh, do you have something wrong with like your right knee? They're like, yeah. I was like, okay. (laughs) And then I'll like do a healing on it and then the pain would disappear. Oh, that's very weird. And then my friends at that time would teach me and say, Josh, you're picking up what the conditions are. And then um, I started having experiences where I would just pick up people's names, like specific names, and I don't know who they are, you know, where I'll just be like hanging out somewhere and then a name would pop up and I would just go up to a stranger and say, does this name mean anything to you and this and that? And then they would confirm it. So I had instances like that. And so psychic in that sense of more, um, you know, just reading people's mail, so to speak, and then trying to use it to help them in some way. Yeah, Yeah. that's amazing. I mean, uh, last week on the show, we had, um, Kelsey Davies, she's a TikTok okay. star, but she's also a psychic medium. But oh, she okay. sees, hers is more, you know, she sees ghosts and a lot of dark stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was for a Halloween <laughs> special. And I, I find it funny that, not funny, but ironic that, you know, you're also a psychic medium and that you've also had yeah, those experiences. Yeah. So it shows that, you know, this is completely true. Like these, you know, that some people just have these gifts. So I find that very interesting. Yeah. 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 And to encourage your audience, everyone has it. It's just mm-hmm. some, some probably have, are a little bit more tuned in and it just takes some matter of practice. So if anyone's interested, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and Joshua, I, I know that you have some exciting news. You have your Law of Assumption courses out for the public. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that and where people can uh, get them. Yeah, yeah. So I just created a course on uh, Neville Goddard, the law of assumption. So I've been teaching LOA for a long time, but I noticed throughout the years, I I started just using a lot of Neville and law of assumption primarily in my YouTube channel. So I knew I needed to eventually put out a course on that. And so basically, it's like the go to for Neville Goddard when it comes to manifestation. You know, so I remember when I was looking into Neville a long time ago, I had all of it. I had his books, but He has a lot of books, right, and a lot of lectures that you'd have to sift through and um, you'd have to interpret it for yourself. And so I remember at that time, I was like, I I wish I had a course like what I just created. So I could honestly say that this course was years in the making because I've been teaching Neville for quite some time. And uh, I just decided, okay, I'm finally going to put it all together and just summarize all of his work, at least when it comes to manifestation. And uh and teach people so it's very interactive you know there's like exercises there and all of his well-known techniques that are there and worksheets just to get people to really understand consciousness because if people just watch a youtube video and they're like all right let me try this technique ah it doesn't work or let me try this technique and they're not really understanding um you know like the fundamentals of it and i think if you really kind of just sit down and understand okay how does consciousness work techniques are actually not even relevant anymore. You don't even need techniques anymore, you know, because yeah. techniques are only there to help you when you don't believe. But if you already believe for stuff, you know, you don't, you don't need to do any technique. Yeah, <laughs> you just yeah. live your life and you intend. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, my course is pretty much uh, Neville Goddard and, and helping people understand his work in a, in a simple way. Very nice. Yeah. We're going to link that. And you can find it online. Yeah, yeah, we're going to link that information below so that our viewers can access your programs and before we end the show i always like to end it on a positive note so i want to ask you for you know anyone that's watching this that maybe is going through a hard time and you know manifestation sometimes can be hard for some people because they're they're trying as you know as you said they they have the the idea and thought but they're not seeing it happen so what would you say to encourage or uplift anyone going through a difficult time right now yeah, so if people have their dreams and not seeing it yet. I would tell them to not give up, right? And understand the law, like really understand it. When you understand the law, you'll know how to apply it. And because it is a law, it's not going to fail. But if you don't understand it as a law and it's just always going to be wishy-washy, does this work, does this not work, you're always going to be trying to, <laughs> all right, which technique should I do next? You know, so I'm telling your, your audience now, as Neville says, you test this, you try this. And I'm telling you now, it works and you just have to not give up. And I'll I'll leave it like this. So one of my favorite, um, you could say analogies that Neville used was like having to do with like a movie, watching a movie. So if you're able to live in the end, you go to the very solution of what you want. Like if you want that dream home or you wanna be happily married. So that's called going to the end. You live in the end. You feel the reality of that right now, right? Not tomorrow, but you're feeling it now. So he likens it to like watching a movie. Imagine you go inside of a movie theater And then you walk in and it's already the end of the movie, (laughs) right? So you witness that ending. So Neville says, okay, but then all of a sudden you just decide I'm going to, you know, sit back and just watch the whole thing from scratch from the beginning just to Mm -hmm. kind of just see how things turn out there. 
But when you're watching it, you already kind of know the ending, right? Yeah. You yeah. already experienced it. But then the audience doesn't know that. And so at the end of the movie or towards the end, you know, the protagonist is accused. He's surrounded by false evidence and the, the viewers are all getting emotional and they're crying. But not you, right? You're not mm -hmm. phased. Why? Because you know the end. Yeah. <laughs> You've already witnessed it. So I encourage your, your, your viewers, if you could see it, you could feel it, you're at that end, it'll manifest. And no matter what happens in your life, even if it doesn't look like it's happening, you're in that state of consciousness, it'll manifest in your world. Mm. You just have to trust it. And so if you if you assumed it the night before, I would tell you that person, remember what you did. You planted a seed. Trust what you did. Yeah. It's going to manifest. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Josh, for being on the show. It's been very insightful. I know that you're joining us from the Philippines and it's very late for you right now. So thank you <laughs> for okay. taking the time for being on the show. Sure. And we hope to My have pleasure. you back soon. Thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch live to YouTube and Facebook.